Hey everyone, it's Kenji. Uh, I'm at home and I'm about to make some miso soup. So the key to miso soup, key to good miso soup, is good dashi, which is the sort of basic Japanese stock. Um, two basic ingredients for dashi, although there, you know there's many different types of dashi, but the two, the most basic one is made from two ingredients: um, kombu, which is this dried sea kelp. Um, so I'm going to take a little bit of that, say a chunk. I'm gonna make a pretty large portion of dashi, so about this much, these two squares. Um, I'm gonna put them in a pot, cover them with cold water. And now, when you're making dashi, you can, um, if you wanna get more flavor out of it, you can take that kelp and let it kind of steep, you know, cold brew kind of overnight. You, you, you let it sit uh, in the cold water overnight or even, you know, even for 10, 15 minutes. But if you're in a hurry, it doesn't really matter. Um, you know, it, it won't make quite as much flavor if you just bring it straight up to a simmer. But that's what I'm gonna do here because, uh, well, lunch is gonna be in about 10 minutes. All right, so I'm gonna let the sea kelp come up to a bare simmer. Um, and meanwhile, I'm gonna get my other ingredient, which is, this, katsuobushi. Um, so katsuobushi is shaved, dried bonito. So it's bonito tuna that's um, cured, fermented, smoked, dried, and shaved. Um, so traditionally you would have a box that has a blade on it, um, sort of similar to like, um, you know, like a, um, a wood plane, um, and then you take the hard block of katsuobushi and you'd shave it fresh. Um, these days you just buy it um, pre-shaved. Um, it'll come in a few different grades, so this stuff is made for um, stock, so it has these kind of larger flakes. Um, you'll also find really sort of fine flakes that are used as a as a garnish. You could sort of sprinkle it on your tofu or sprinkle it on your okonomiyaki or whatever. Um, oh, so if you notice this, so this sea kelp, um, this dry sort of powdery stuff, um, those are crystals of salts, various types of sea salts, um, so including, you know, including including sodium chloride, um, but also um, things like MSG. So M MSG is actually derived from sea kelp initially. Well, these days it's synthetically made, but initially it was derived from sea kelp. Um, so miso soup, very simple. All you do is make dashi and then add some miso paste, and that's it. Um, so when you're making dashi, there's a lot of schools of thought on this, um, but there's two sort of basic basic rules. Um, well, actually, really only one basic rule, which is that you don't want to simmer the katsuobushi. Um, the kombu, you know, a lot of people will say that um, if you simmer the kombu for too long, it'll become bitter or impart some bitter flavors to the dashi. Um, I've never really found that to be the case. Um, so typically when I make dashi, I'll either let it steep cold for about half an hour, bring it up to a simmer and then shut it off, or I'll just do what I'm gonna do now, which is let it come up to a simmer and just simmer for like a minute or so. Um, I never find that you get any bitter flavor, but if you do, um, then don't simmer it if you don't want to. Um, the the one place where you really don't want to simmer is the katsuobushi. Um, so if you pour the katsuobushi into hot broth, um, it will have a very sort of nice, clean, not too fishy, but very savory, slightly smoky aroma. Um, if you let it simmer for too long, it'll start to get a little bit fishy. And if you simmer it for like, you know, long, any longer than like a few minutes, it's gonna get a really sort of sour, off flavor to it. Um, so you don't wanna do that. So I'm just gonna let this come to simmer. Meanwhile, I'm gonna get my other ingredients ready. Miso paste, you can use any type of miso paste you want. Um, I'm using this yellow miso. I find the easiest way to incorporate miso is to just get a whisk like this and dig it straight into the miso like that, and that's ready to go into the soup. I'll set that aside. Um, I'm gonna cut some tofu. This is uh, silken tofu. You don't have to use silken tofu. You can also use sort of fried tofu is very common in miso soup. Um, any kind of tofu you'd like. Um, and of course, you don't have to use tofu at all if you don't want to. Um, I like tofu though, so I'm gonna, I'm gonna use it. Um, I'm gonna cut it into pretty fine cubes. It's okay if it falls apart a little bit. Um, normally I would use a firm silken tofu. Tofu. This is a soft silken tofu, so it's a little bit sort of milder, um, more, more prone to breaking than uh, something I would use, but it's all I had, so I'm using it. And then the other ingredients I'm gonna use are seaweed. Um, so I have two types of seaweed here. One of them is wakame, and this is sort of the classic um, seaweed that you'll find in miso soup. Um, it's, uh, you'll, see it, you'll see when it, um, when it rehydrates. Um, and then the other one is this one called hijiki, which is, um, so 
my mom thinks it's funny that I put this in miso soup because hijiki is sort of used as a, um, well, it's used for like a food of convalescence. You know, it's like for you, you give it to sick people or old people, um, says my mom. Um, but I really like the way it tastes. Um, so I'm going to add both of these to my miso soup. All right. Now, this is almost at a simmer. So you know what I'm going to do? I'm just going to, eh, actually, it's basically at a simmer. Uh, what I'll do is I'll just snap my fingers and it'll be ready to go, okay? And we're at a simmer. So, um, oh, the ratio of this, I'm using about two quarts of water to about one ounce of kombu and about one ounce of katsuobushi. Um, you don't need to use that exact ratio. You can go a little higher if you like it more concentrated or less if you like it less, um, but that's about the ratio I use. I just kind of eyeball it. So now that it's come to a simmer, I'm going to shut it off. I'm going to add my katsuobushi. And then I'm just going to let it basically steep like tea um, for about, oh, about, let's say, five minutes. So, steeped and ready to go. Now I'm just going to strain it. Oh, I'm going to take a quick picture. Sorry. I'm still taking photos from my book. Okay. So I'm going to strain this out. Now, you can also, for dashi, um, you can also use things like... Um, dried sardine, a uh, little dried fish. They're called a uh, niboshi. Um, you could use mushrooms. There's, there's a bunch of different ways to make um, dashi, but this is just sort of the most basic and the one that I use the most. Um, now, what we have here is called ichiban dashi, which means first dashi. Um, you can also now take these spent katsuobushi and sea kelp bits and make what's called nibandashi, which is where you take this, add fresh water, and simmer it again. Um, and nibandashi is great for, um, say, dishes where you're gonna simmer. So dishes like simmered pumpkin um, in dashi is great. Simmered chicken breast in, in nibandashi is great. Um, for, for a clear soup like this, um, I'm gonna use the ichiban dashi because it has sort of the cleanest, best flavor. Um, you can also, by the way, um, take all this le leftover katsuobushi and sea kelp uh, <clears throat> and cook it into something called furikake, which is like a, a seasoning mix that's sort of a sweet and savory seasoning mix that you put on your rice. Um, I don't have a printed recipe for I I'm gonna have a recipe in my new book coming out um, next year, but um, uh, go to justonecookbook.com. I'll link it in the um, I'll link it in the comments below. But there's a great site, Just One Cookbook. Um, Nami she um, she has a recipe for furikake made out of spent katsuobushi and kombu from your dashi. That's excellent. All right. So now we got this. We put the strainer right back in. We take our whisk filled with um, miso paste, which I'm going to take a quick picture of because, as I said, I'm still taking pictures from my book. Wait, right? Hold on a second. Let me. Uh... All right. All right. And now, um, miso can sometimes be a little bit grainy. So if you want your miso soup nice and smooth, you take a fine mesh strainer like this, take your whisk full of miso, and just whisk it just like that. Well, and I'm also going to take a picture of this one. Action shot. All right. And you just whisk it in like this. With the strainer set in the soup. Almost there. Right. And that is our miso soup. So to this, I'm going to just add a little bit of that hijiki, a little bit of that wakame. And you really don't need a little bit, need a little bit of it because it's going to um, obviously expand. This is dried seaweeds. You can get these ones at any Japanese market or um, online. Okay, Let me taste that soup. And you'll see the soup, the hijiki and the um, wakame, they'll basically reconstitute in the water. Um, basically in the time that it takes you to serve this, um, that's how long it's gonna take the, the seaweed to 
come back to life. Just a couple of minutes. Yum. Mm. Um, miso soup is excellent when you're feeling nauseous or sick or hungover. Very easy to drink. Got a lot of salt and good stuff in it. And there we have it. Very simple. Miso soup with tofu and seaweed. Okay. I'm gonna get a bowl of this because I want to take a picture over in the other room. Some more floaties in there. All right. I'm gonna grab my hundred millimeter lens here. You're gonna notice in quite a few of my videos coming up, um, I'm gonna be taking pictures of stuff just because that's the stage I'm at in my book. All the recipes are tested, but the photos aren't all taken. I got my nice little fake backdrop here. Nice indirect sunlight by the window, which is exactly what you want for good food photos. everything. Okay. So we're going to go with plenty of negative space. Get our focus set. I always like to take a few photos um, using different um, apertures on my camera. So the, the aperture in your camera, by the way, um, here's another quick tip for you when you're taking photos. The aperture in your camera is the um, the size of the um, that the iris opens to. Um, so it's measured in what's called an f-stop number. Um, so a f-stop, the lower the number, the wider the um, aperture is open because it's a it's an inverse. So an f of 2.8 means that it's um, one over 2.8 is the ratio of the full size of the lens to how much is open. Um, and most lens most lenses will max out at a certain amount. Um, there's very few one to one lenses. This one maxes out at 2.8. Um, the rule of thumb is that the wider the lens is open, the shallower the depth of field. Um, so if I set this up to like one over say 114, that's one fourteenth of the lens is open you get a very deep depth of field, which means that a lot of the picture is in focus. Whereas at a very low depth of field, I'm um, sorry, at a very low f-stop number, that means much the lens is much wi more wide open, you get a shallower depth of field. So that's how you get that sort of blurred background effect on um, some food, food photos. Anyhow, that's it. Miso soup, super, super simple, um, extremely delicious. And um, yeah, guys, gals, non-binary non -binary pals, I will see you next time. Bye-bye. Hey everyone, it's Kenji. There are 22 million kids in this country that rely on school lunches for nutritious meals. And with schools closed now more than ever, organizations like No Kid Hungry can use their support. So I'm asking you to join me. Uh, click the link in the description below to donate some money. No amount is too small or too big. Thank you very much and stay safe. Bye-bye.